The set table at last. In last week's parsha, we saw how Bnei Yisroel had their long-awaited encounter with Hashem at Mount Sinai. They had stood at the foot of the mountain and heard the Ten Commandments from none other than Hashem Himself and from their great teacher Moshe. They are still spellbound by this, but there was more to come. After the Ten Commandments, Moshe spent forty days and forty nights with Hashem on the mountain, learning their details and many more mitzvot. These, These are the mishpat. The laws that you shall set before them. So begins the first parsha after the Ten Commandments. Moshe was given the task to present the Torah's laws in a clear, beautiful, and appealing fashion, like a shulchan aruch, a set table. When you set a table, you lay out the plates, silverware, and glasses in a neat and orderly way, and that's just how Moshe explained the laws to the Jewish people in an organized way, so that the Torah was understood with clarity. Mishpatim, laws between man and man. Mishpatim is the name of this parsha, and it means laws, specifically those laws which are bein adam lechavero, between man and man. And this is what most of Parsha's Mishpatim speaks about. Many of these mitzvos are quite logical and deal with life's everyday challenges, be it questions of damages, Hey, you're a horse stepped on my foot! Business transactions and disputes, I saw that horse first! Or lending money. Give me back the 4,000 rubles I lent to you last month. But I used it to buy a horse to step on people's feet. Later, Bnei Yisroel would learn more about the mitzvos of Bain Adam Lamako, between man and God, commandments that teach us how we should act toward Hashem. Before getting into the details of the Mishpatim, Hashem laid down the ground rules. All court cases between Jews must, must take, take place, place in a, in a Jewish, Jewish court of law called a Beistan, and, and not, not to a regular, regular non-Jewish non court, court, even if that court would decide the case exactly as the Jewish, Jewish court. court. Many of the laws in Parshat's Mishpatim are very detailed and quite complicated. In the following examples, using real-life situations, Shazak Parsha will give you a taste of a few important Mishpatim from this week's Parsha. Pitfall One day, Mr. Pitts notices his basement flooding. He is quite handy and decides to fix the problem himself. Mr. Pitts spends the entire day digging up his front lawn in order to find the broken pipe. He digs quite a big hole in the yard, but it's getting late and dark, and Mr. Pitts calls it quits for the day. Oops! Mr. Pitts leaves the pit uncovered. Meanwhile, Mr. Fall In walks by and falls right into the hole! Ah! Oh no! Oh, oh yes! Mr. Fall In has the right to take Mr. Pitts to base den, and the verdict is... <sighs> Pay up, Mr. Pitts, you should have covered the hole. And that's the whole truth. <laughs> What if Mr. Drowsy goes camping, and while he's snoozing away, his crackling campfire spreads and becomes a raging forest fire? Fire! This is very serious. When fire hurts people or damages property, it's no joke. Whether or not Mr. Drowsy intentionally planned to start a fire, he must pay for all damage the fire causes in full, down to the very last penny. It's a very important safety rule not to play with matches, lighters, or candles. Kosher Kitchen Don't, Don't cook, cook a young, young animal, animal in the, in the milk, milk of its, of its mother. mother. These words are the basis for the rules for keeping kosher. In a kosher kitchen, Meat foods are kept completely separate from milk foods, and meat and milk are never cooked or eaten together. 
Now you know why kosher kitchens have two sets of dishes, pots, pans. Some people even have separate salt and pepper shakers, one for meat and the other for dairy. If you like this Taste of Shazak Parsha video, you'll love the complete video at shazak.com. You'll also get amazing Parsha quizzers, puzzles, Parsha on a page, and the Parsha post. Use coupon code SHAZAK for a great discount.